The title of her message is God Care. Watch the law of substitution. God Care. Watch the law of substitution. Our God is a caring God. You can see from the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Ask your neighbor, to who do you cast your care? Ask him again. Cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. Open the Bible with me in the book of Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We will read from verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Trust in the Lord and do good. When you trust God, you cannot fail. If you trust man, he may still deceive you, and that will bring a lot of curses. Trust the Lord and do good. The person who trusts in the Lord, they always do good. They don't do evil. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Whenever you commit your ways to the Lord... Believe God for a scripture on that which you are believing. There is something you are believing. If you need finances from God, you must have a relevant scripture that will help you. If you are believing God for healing, you commit your way to the Lord. You don't go to traditional healer. Otherwise, you will be deceived. Hallelujah. When you commit your way to the Lord, you trust in him, there are things God will do. Number one, he will make your righteousness reward shine like the dove. Your vindication, like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out the wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Don't be angry. Anger can lead to sin. Anger will lead to what? For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who open the Lord will inherit the land. Sinners will disappear, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. When I see the word of God, I believe it. I take it. And that is what will happen for me. I don't know about you. I don't have any land, but because I trust in the Lord, I will possess what? The land. I don't have any land at all, but because my trust is in the Lord, his word cannot fail. His word will always come to pass. Therefore, I will possess the land stress-free because of my trust in the Lord. You know, 
there are people, when you see them now, you will say, ah, this one is prospering. But you don't know the way he's making his money. And the Bible says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. There are people that have business of selling human blood. So they have to kidnap somebody, drain the blood of the person, and put it on sale, and they get money. I know a sister that used to sell his pet after menstruation. This man said to him, bring me the blood after menstruating. I will buy it. One pet, I will give you 5,000 rand. Two pet, 10,000 rand. And that is what she has been doing. And she will pray that she have two weeks of menstruation. She was selling herself the love of the flesh is in the blood. She didn't know what he was doing. At the end of the day, when she, she understood that the food of that man was his blood. The Bible tells us, refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Many of us think that when you're always angry, it is well for you to intimidate people around you. No, you are bringing sickness to yourself. You are bringing, the first sickness you bring into your body is high blood pressure. Because your blood will be running fast. And then you will have no peace. Then demon will take over. It's not something normal. Anytime you get angry, you will always make mistakes. You make one mistake, you make another mistake, you make another mistake, that will destroy your life. Our God is a caring God and compassionate. His heart goes out to us whenever we are hurt. Prophet Isaiah says, from the book of Pro Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, Yet the Lord longed to be gracious to you, Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. God will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wish to wait from the Lord. I really don't mind about the time, but I know that when God gives you, you will have great peace. When God gives you, you will not be tormented by whatsoever because it has been given to you by God. Our God does not only care, He is able to solve any problem we take before Him. He is able to solve any problem we take before him. He is a covenant-keeping God. He is also a prayer-answering God. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 19. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious it will be when you cry for help. As soon as he is, he will answer you. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. Think about when this widow and the only son that he had died. The Bible said Jesus had compassion on them. He understood that this widow had only the only child. The husband has just died. And the only son also is dead. 
Jesus had compassion on them. She was a lovely widow because she had a crowd of people, so she lived with people. Jesus came and touched the coffin and said, Arise. He stood up, said, Give him food to eat. The boy was back to life, very strong, sound, because of compassion. Jesus saw the way the woman was crying. He answered. He answered. Now, we are talking about God care. Watch the law of substitution. The law of substitution will work for you as a proof that God care for you. Many of us, when we encounter a problem, we think that no, nobody will bring help here. It's impossible. I'm finished. It's not like that, my friend. The first thing you need to build is your relationship with God. It must be genuine, not fake. You must not pretend to love God. Love him with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart. If you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus and you are available for God's service, God will always operate the law of substitution in your favor. What does substitution mean, Pastor Shiko? I will explain it in many ways, then you will get the message. Substitution means if death is about to swallow you, God will say, no, you death, leave him alone. Take any wicked in his place. In a good way is when we say what you sow, you will reap. The law of substitution was at work in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What we say from the book of Daniel chapter 3, Verse 20, the king commanded the strongest man in his army to bind the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up. They were fully dressed. They had their robe, their shirt, their caps. And all that they could have. And they threw them into the blazing furnace. Verse 22. The Bible says, Because the king had given strict order for the furnace to be made extremely hot, the flame burned up. The stronger soldier who took them to the furnace. Look up and look at me, everybody. I don't know what's happening in your life. We are in a very critical period of times. You don't know what will happen next. Are you there? There is what we call national disasters, so you don't play them. Suddenly there is an earthquake. Suddenly there is a heavy storm. And it's killing. Well, in the place where we are, we, we, we may say we are very secure. It may not be like that. There are people who are plotting evil against your life. This is the month of November. You need to be aware of the activity of December. Because up until now, many of us here what you see there is only flesh. The person is already dead. He's not inside. He's already dead. He's just waiting for December. And then they will say, it's finished. But I have good news for you. Yeah. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will happen to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. The people that will come to take you so that you can die, they are the ones that will die in your place in Jesus' name. 
Did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego die? No. Think about this. The person who burned, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not skinny soldier, powerless soldier. The Bible said they were the strongest in the army of King Nebuchadnezzar. So the person that will attack you will measure his force and your force. So the pit of hell will not release the small demons. They will release the strongest one. There is someone here, the enemy is plotting car accident against you. You heard it before. It will not happen for the second time in Jesus' name. Amen. Affliction shall not come a second time in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. A lot of things happen from one life to another. The people that came to burn Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, they were very strong soldiers. But they are the ones who that die. Fire cannot kill fire. Fire is fire. The king was amazed. He leaped on his feet. He said, what am I seeing there? He asked his counselor. Didn't we three Three people in the hot fire, they say, yes, sir. Yes, your majesty. He said, I'm seeing four people there. I'm seeing how many people? Four people. 2014, the last number is number four. So, in anything you will do, the fourth person will appear in 2014 in Jesus' name. In 2014, you will not be alone. No matter what's happening in your life, the fourth person will always come. Just the way he came for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I really don't mind the conspiracy they are doing against you. They are the one that will die in your place. If I'm talking to you, let your amen be loud and clear. If you will not bury your children, say amen loud and clear. Amen. If you will not bury your husband, let me say amen loud and clear. Amen. Sometime you will see that, yes, indeed I'm under attack, but don't be afraid. If you have a genuine relationship with the living God, hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the law of substitution, of substitution took place in their case. What happened? Indeed, they were qualified to die, but a change was taken place. They spent the rest of their life just sharing that testimony. The king himself said, these people have defied the word of the king. The king said, he appreciated them, their courage. Your midnight prayer time during this period of time is very important. I will tell you something. In one of the villages, the only boy that left the village that came in the city, if they beat their drum and the face of everybody in the village you can appear there, so they will be calling one by one, one by one. They see his life, what's happening in his life, so they control the person. This boy left the village, came in the city. He had born again, born again, fire prayer. He gave his love to the Lord. He began to worship the Lord. Little did he know in the village, they are beating drum to call his name. In the church, they were praying. Anyway, my name will be called. Blood of Jesus appear, fight for me. They called the name of this boy. And his face appeared in the drum. So, the traditional priest have to use the knife and strike 
on the drum. So if you strike the drum, the boy anyway he's he will die. He will fall and die. Sudden death. He lift up his hand. And the face of the boy was there. The moment he was going down, the face changed. It became his face. The face of the boy disappeared. And the other chief priest said, you have to strike. Why are you stopping? They said, no, I cannot strike because now it's me. It's not that boy. They said, you must strike. You cannot bring your hand out. You cannot reverse it. This law is unbroken law. You must strike. And uh, that priest struck. He fell and died in the place of that boy. Why? Because that boy was on the altar of prayer. The big mistake the enemy made, he was attacking when he was praying. You always spend your midnight when you sleep like that and witches are calling your name, they will strike you down. Are you what I'm saying to you? Every midnight, take maybe 30 minutes from midnight. If you are strong, go up to one. Just pray. Then go and sleep. Because every midnight, there are some kind of spiritual activity that take place. And don't try to be a victim of those things. Are you with me? If you are highly favored and the Lord is with you, God will always apply the law of substitution in your favor. Think about Daniel. Daniel was highly favored and the Lord was with him. God applied the law of substitution in his favor. From the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 11, when the angel of God came to Daniel, he said, Daniel, you who are highly favored, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your word will ahead. I've come down because of your word. From there, you can see that Daniel was already highly favored by God. I want to tell you something about Daniel. You must learn to plan and prepare your future. Say this with me loud and clear. A man of broken focus is bound to be a failure. If you have a broken focus, you are bound to be a failure for life. Every man that do business, this November, they are almost about to close. In December, you hear everybody's gone for holiday because they've closed. Yet, they still have to analyze what they've done, what they've produced. Do they increase? Do they improve in their business? So, you have to come in the place where you analyze also your Christianity every end of the year. How much did I grow in the Lord? What is it that I did not do very well? What is it that I did well? What is my spiritual position right now as I'm standing now? All these questions are very important. That's why I don't want anybody to come here for numbers to grow. No. I want you to come here for improvement. I want to see a change in your life. Now that I'm speaking to you, you can sit down and say, well, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What can I do to improve for next year? Daniel was one of the boys that was appointed to work in the house of the king. In the house of the king, you cannot starve. Everything is there. But he made up his mind. And I agree with the eunuch that please don't give me the wine of the king, the meat of the king. I just want to eat veggie. And he prayed and fasted for three good years. How many years? Why? Because he will save the king. And the king is a human being like you and me. What about you saving the true living God? 
what will be your decision to serve him effectively, confidently? Everybody can be a pastor. There is no problem with that. But the quality of job you produce as a pastor matters. Is it clear? Daniel knew that he had to serve in the house of the king. He went into prayer and fasting for three good years. You are doing business. You don't want to pray and fast. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Deaf and damp spirits are punch you. What? Who are you in this body? All over your body. Fire! Speak. What? Who are you? Fire! Who are you? More fire there. Fire! On your jacket, underneath your feet. Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus. Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus. Who are you? I want water. Who are you in this body? I want water to drink. I want water to drink. You want water to drink? Yeah. Come, I give you water. My heart is hot. Your heart is hot? Yeah. Okay. Give me anointing water. I want water. Hurry up. Can I drink water, my heart? Now, nah, answer me. Who are you? My heart. Eh? Is it my heart? Eh? My heart. My heart. It's so hot. What do you do here? Come and take water. Eh? Come and take water. Come and take water. Put down. Eh? Put down. You want put me to down, put it I'll down? Fetch it. Yeah, put down. I'll fetch it. Uh -huh. Put down, I'll fetch it. Okay. You must move. Huh? Move. Move. Uh, move. Okay. Huh? Can I take it? Hey, take. To drink water. Huh? I want to drink water, my heart. You want to drink water? Yeah. There is water. You are there. Huh? You are there. Me? Yeah. Where? There. Where? There in the water. I'm in the water. Huh? Leave me to go, please. Leave me to go. I want to fetch water. You want to fetch water? Please, daddy. There is water here. No, daddy, this water is not good. Huh? It's not good. Can I take water? No, uh, you must explain me. What is that that is not good? Huh? It does not look fair. Huh? It don't look fair. It lo doesn't look fair. Yeah. How does it look like? It look like something else. See, there's something inside there is white. Something inside there is white. Can't you see? Is it so? I want to drink waters. Uh, there is water. No, there's something. Can't you see there's something? It's white, man. I need to hold it. My heart is sore. Uh, okay. Daddy, please now. Nah. I'll show you that it's water. Fire! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Out! Fire! 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 All over your body. Fire! Oh, you demons. Don't do this, man. Ah, why? Eh? Why do this? Am I... <laughs> what is that? You're bending me, man. Eh? You're bending me. Eh? You're bending me. I want to be with you. What do you do in this body? Uh, what do you do in this body? I just come to play. Eh? I just come to play. You just came to play? Yeah. For how long? I didn't take it serious. Eh? I didn't take it serious, man. You I am sugar. Eh? Sugar, man. 
Sugar. Okay. On your head fire. On your back fire. On your belly fire. All over your body. Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus. On your face. In your belly. Fire! Fire! On your face. On your belly. On your jacket. Don't bend me, please. Holy Ghost. Don't bend me, please. Fire! Please. Underneath your feet. Please. Fire! Please don't bend me. Eh? Please don't bend me. Oh. Leave the body. I'll talk. Eh? I'll talk. Eh? I'll talk. Okay, go ahead. Calm down. Why are you fighting? Speak. Eh? You will do what? There is fire! Eh? There is fire! You say you will talk. Pull water, I'll talk. Pour go water. ahead, talk. Pull water in my head. Underneath your feet. Fire! Are you ready to talk? Fire, on your talk. back, on your belly, on your head, between your legs. Fire! I beg, say, let me talk now. Okay. Let me talk, I beg. Go ahead. I beg. I will just come to play, Papa. Eh? I will just come to play now. You, who are you? Who are you? This lady is playing with me. This lady is playing with me. Don't want to leave the man alone. <laughs> you don't want to leave the man alone. That's when I just come to play. <laughs> what have you done to the husband? <laughs> it's my husband too. You don't want to leave him for me. <laughs> How long have you been in this body? Not so long, sir. Not so long. I was just trying to play. <laughs> leave me to go, please, I beg. Eh? I beg. Leave me to go, please. Leave me to go, sir. Stand up. I beg you in Jesus' name. Your in Lord Jesus is so name. powerful. Look here, look here. He said to me, I must go. Eh? Look here, look here. No, I can't As look at you. You are fire. Eh? You are fire. Look here. Ah, it's so hard to say. Now, Dima, go. In the eh? name of Jesus. Eh? Fire! Come out! Fire! Come out! Come out! Fire! Fire! The mighty name of Jesus, as of Nazareth. Out! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Stand up. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, Daddy. What happened? I just find myself down. You just find yourself down? Yeah, I don't know. Push me. Do you know what you just said to me now? Mm -hmm. You don't know? Mm -hmm. You still remember saying something? Hmm? Do you still remember saying something? No. Eh? I cannot hear you. No, Daddy. Okay. Jesus has set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I'm free. Go for your interview down there. Spirit of bondage. Spirit of death. Fire! Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Listen! Out! Out! Spiritual wife. Out! Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Get out, snake. Fire! 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 Thank you, Father. Out! Out! Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, go. Don't come back in this body. Go! Out! Out! Jesus, Martin. Thank you, Lord. You are free. Stand up. You are free. Pow! The mighty name of Jesus House of Nazareth. Spirit of poverty, spirit of suffering, spirit of struggling with this life. Die! Die! In the mighty name of Jesus. Out! Spiritual wife. Come out! Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. 
We are free in Jesus' name. Next day. Hurry up. You are free, my friend. Spiritual. <laughs> eh? Face underneath your feet. Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Thou our spiritual husband of this soil. In Jesus' name. Stand up. Hello? How are you? I'm fine. What happened? I don't know. I saw myself down. You saw yourself down? Yeah. Why were you dancing? I was not dancing. What were you doing? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. Okay. Jesus has set you free, huh? Thank you, sir. God bless you. You must be polite, eh? Shake my hand. Eh? Shake my hand. You cannot shake my hand. Okay, I will teach you a lesson now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Eh? Microphone in his mouth. What is this? Mini skirt or mini what? <laughs> you are you. You want to run? Eh? I remove your feet. Now run, let me see. Your feet is removed. Run. You borrow feet and you want to run. Run, let me see. Run. Run. You have no feet. Run. I remove your hand. Eh? You will not just sit, but I remove your back also in the name of Jesus. Jesus, what's your name? That's it. You have no back. You have no back. I remove it. You have no back. <laughs> Mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Who gave you the back to sit? Pain. Mighty name of Jesus. Okay, I will leave you in my cage. Let go. Let go. She's cage. Why? What do you do in the body of my daughter? She must suffer. Eh? She must suffer. What kind of suffering? Everything. Eh? No money, no marriage. Why? Eh? Just. Just what? You've made a big mistake. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, sir. Eh? I'm going nowhere. Where did you come from so that you will not go anywhere? Mm -mm. Where did you come from so that you will not go anywhere? She's my wife. Eh? She's my wife. She's your wife. Yeah. Where did you pay her? Not get married. Where did you pay her? She will suffer. 
Where did you pay Lobola? Eh? I didn't. You didn't? Okay. I want to tell you that she was bought with a price that is the blood of Jesus. So you demons who have no right to torment this body again in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire out in the name of Jesus. I'm not going. Eh, you, you are going now. Fire! Eh? Now she will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, you demons. Demons of <laughs> suffering. A panjo. Come out. Out. Fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. You are free. Hello? How are you? Eh? I'm fine. You still remember what you just said now? Eh? I don't know. Eh? I don't know, Pastor. You say you must suffer. Me? Hmm. Okay, the demons of suffering are gone. The Lord Jesus has set you free. You are free. You, who are you? Who are you? Eh? No. Eh? No. What are you doing in the body of my daughter? No. Eh? What do you do in this body? No, this is, no, no. Eh? No, she's stubborn. She's stubborn. Okay, tell me. She's stubborn. What does she do? She says, she, eh? she, she always says, I will survive. I will survive. I will survive. She's very, very stubborn. You, who are you? Who are you? You, who are you? Eh? No, 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 no. Who are you? No. Who are you in this body? I said, speak. No. Who are you in this body? No. Who are you? Where are you from? No. Eh? Spiritual husband. Spiritual husband. No. How many children do you have? Lord. How many? How many children do you have? Lots, lots. How many a lot? No, I eh? am tired. I leave me alone. I, I'm tired. Leave me alone. I'm tired. I'm tired of stubborn over here, man. Yesterday, yesterday, she go and pay Lobola. For what? She's my husband. Why? How many children do you have? I don't have. You, how many do you have? Spiritual husband, stand up. Spiritual husband, look here. Hands up. Hands up. Lift up your hand. Now, leave my daughter. Go. Come out. Go, 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 go. I want to go. I want to go. Come out. In Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Remove this. Stand up. Stand up. 
Look here. Hey. Look at me. Leave my daughter and go. Pa! In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, as of Nazareth. Hey! Mighty name of Jesus, you snake. Out! Jesus, mighty name. Thank you, Father. You are free. Stand up. What happened? To every business, there is a spirit that guides that business. To every family, there is a spirit that guides that family. Your house is not somebody else's house. There is a spirit that is guiding that house. At the end of the day, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were the most excellent boys among the boys that were working there. The wisdom, the Bible says, was ten times greater than the wisdom of the magicians. So, Daniel, the Bible says, he prayed three times a day. You see, if we say, begin to pray three times a day, you will, have, you will struggle. If you fail to pray once a day, what will be to three times a day? You will not make it. Many of you have been making vow. I will do this. I will do this. You always fail to do it. That's why you're going nowhere with your life. Daniel had a life of discipline. He prayed three times a day. And now, a group of people, not simple people, governors, they came together. They say, well, did you hear the way the king is praising Daniel? Yes. Okay, something must be done as soon as possible. Daniel, number one, was trustworthy. Daniel was honest. Daniel was faithful. They could find no corruption in him. He was not negligent at all. He was born again. He feared God. He was a trustworthy boy. He was honest. He was faithful. They could find no corruption in him. He was not negligent. The administrators, the prefects, the satraps, the advisor, and the governors try to find something wrong with the way he did his work for the king, but they could not accuse him of anything wrong. These people finally say, Daniel chapter 6, verse 5, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. And they knew that Daniel is not an idol worshiper. They said, well, let us do something for the king. The king must be praised like God. Anyone that will call any other God, you must put him in the lion dance. Then the lion can eat him alive. I believe that will be the only way to destroy the life of Daniel. Do you know that you get into the place where you are working with people and nobody, nobody at all loves you among the group of people? They don't greet you. They don't say hello to you. They just, they just don't see you, but you are there. And they are not interested to see you. They just want to see you disappear. And you will try to do your best to please them, to, to, to force yourself to them. No. Born again, don't live that kind of life. Mostly if you are one of the line of the tribe of Judah. A lion which is mighty among the beasts and does not turn away from any. I used to be very much concerned about the beast. Even the beast that will appear. Because the Bible says, 
Michael defeated the dragon. And when the dragon came down, he was on the seashore. And he handed over his power to the beast that came out of the river Ephraim. It used to torment me. It used to bother me. I say, ah, the beast. And the beast gave his power to the false prophet. And the Bible say, demons came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. It will go out there to torment people. I was still very much concerned. I said, what's happening now? You need to know your book. I discovered that in the book of Revelation chapter 20, when you start by, from verse 7, the Bible says, when Satan is released from his prison, when Satan is released from his prison, his army will be in numbers, they will be like the sand on the seashore. I say, wait, 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 wait. The children of Abraham also must be like the sand of the seashore. The children of the devil also are like the sand of the seashore. How do you know the children of God and the children of the devil? Read your Bible well. And the Spirit of God said to me, no, you just check the foot of the Spirit. You don't need to disturb yourself. The person that is arrogant, they belong to that army. The person that is humble belongs to the army of the Lord. Very simple. I said, praise the Lord. Now, this army of the devil, in numbers, they are like the sand on the seashore. And the Bible says, they surround the house of the righteous. Think twice about the friends that you have around and the friends of your children. In numbers, they are like the sand on the seashore. With the spiritual education I've received from the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, fire came from heaven and consumed them. In numbers, they are like the sand on the seashore. But fire came down from heaven and consumed the enemy that is number. They are like the sand on the seashore, those that have surrounded the house. Every night, enemy, they will come in thousands to surround your house, to deceive you, to give you bad dreams, to attack you through many ways. But when you know how to bring down fire from heaven, you will defile them. You will disgrace them. Now, what is the solution of the beast? Jesus Christ is one of the line of the tribe of Judah. And Proverbs chapter 30, verse 30 says, A lion which is mighty among the beast and does not turn away from any. A lion which is the strongest among the beast and does not turn away from any. This is where I say, oh, praise the Lord. There is always room to defeat the beast. Raise your voice right where you are. Say, power of the beast, of the beast. that is ruling my trap. Ta! A lion which is mighty among the beasts and does not turn away from any. Last time we learned about the identity of Judah. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemy. Your brothers will praise you. Your father's sons will bow down to you. That is an identity of Every born again. And Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen to this carefully. When these people have made their conspiracy against Daniel, they forgot that physically in their eyes they will see Daniel, but spiritually Daniel was a lion. Because when they put uh, Daniel in the pit of lions, 
not one of the lions dare to open his mouth to roar or to hit Daniel. No one had that ability. Not one of them could dare to lay his hand on Daniel because Daniel was one of them. And God himself gave them instruction. He said, hey, mind you, I have good food for you. Don't lay hand on Daniel. Otherwise, you will miss the best one. The Bible says, from the book of Daniel, Daniel did not depend on the law that was put in place. The law said that anyone that worship any other god will be put in the pit of a lion. That's from the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 7. The royal administrators, prefect, satraps, advisor, and governors all agree that the king should make a law and enforce the decree that anyone who pray to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to the king, shall be thrown into the lion dens. Everyone who disobeyed this law must be thrown into a pit of lion. And that law came to pass. Verse 10. When Daniel learned that the order has been signed, he went home in an upstairs room of his house where the, wind, when the window faced Jerusalem. Just as he had always done, he kneeled down at the open window and prayed to God three times a day. How many times? When Daniel's enemy observed him praying to God, all of them went together to the king to accuse Daniel. How many of them went to accuse Daniel? The royal administrators, the prefects, satraps, advisors, governors. All these five classes that work for the king just went to accuse one person. Well, the law say Nobody can change it because it was the law of Med and Persia. It was a strict order. To every family, there is a law. And they told you it cannot change. This law worked against us most of the time. During the funeral, during the wedding. What is the other festival? When the firstborn is born. When the first child is born, they will say, you must do this, you must do this. Otherwise, the ancestor will not be happy. When somebody is dead, they will say, you must do this, you must do this. Otherwise, this is what will happen. But you never ask them, who put this law? And those laws are unbroken law. Well, we know that there are law that cannot be broken indeed. But when Jesus came, he began to teach us that there are many law that can break. He walked on the water. People think that everyone that goes on the water, you must sink. No. Jesus walked on the water. That is one of the law he break. People like Joshua, there are law they break. Oh, son, stand still. He did not pray quietly, son, you know. There are people are fighting me now. You Can you stop right where you are? No ways. The Bible says, Joshua pray louder so that all the Israelites could hear what he said. So he said, son, stop. And the son stood still. So the law was broken. Hallelujah. The next person that has to break the law here is Daniel. He lived with the lion. Not one of the lions lay hand on him. He was vindicated. The king himself spent the night praying and fasting for Daniel. Why? 
because Daniel was trustworthy, Daniel was honest, Daniel was faithful. Ask your neighbor, can I trust you? With money. Daniel was trustworthy, he was honest, he was faithful. Daniel did not break his habit of praying three times a day. He did not build it in one day. He built it up from the before he started working for the king. Three years before. He built up a genuine relationship with God. And the day crisis came, he was vindicated. Are we learning something here? If you are faithful, every day you are honest, every day you are trustworthy, every day, the day challenges will come. It will be like a wind that is passing by. It will not affect you. I don't see a witch or a wizard raising finger against you, saying, cursing you or manipulating you. It will not happen. It cannot stand. Because the learning in you is so charged up. A learn which is mighty among the beasts and does not turn away from any. They will not come close. No, it's impossible. The law of substitution work in the favor of Daniel because of this character that was upon him. When the lion did not eat Daniel, the kings now say, call me everybody that accuses Daniel. Now, this is the most critical part. He did not just call them. He said, with their wife, innocent. With their children, bring them in. Innocent children have to pay for the mischief of their fathers. Madam, if you see your husband doing something wrong, tell him with love. Annie, I believe here is not fine. Think, this is what the word of God said, this is what you are doing. Here, I believe we will have a problem. But if you say, hey, you are doing it fine. He hey, nah, nah, nah. hey, will not take it because your approach is already wrong. Are you with me? As men, we are very stubborn from birth. Now, if you want to bring correction, come with love. If you come as you know too much, nobody will take it. And everything will come back on your head. So you must be a woman of wisdom. Speak to your husband with love. Don't manipulate your love. Don't manipulate your husband. Hallelujah. Your wife can give you good advice. She can also mislead you. You always ask the Holy Spirit, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? As I'm speaking to you, there is someone here, you are receiving healing in your body. You are receiving healing. I don't know how to say it because it's inside your body. I thank God for your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. The case of these people that stood against Daniel, all of them died in one day. They were making sure that Daniel must die just because he was trustworthy, because he was faithful, because he was honest. All of them died. Not only them, the children die, the wife die. In one day, all of them die. If you are born again, you are leading a life that is not worthy unto the Lord. You are not just destroying yourself, you are also destroying your children, children, children. The punishment will affect them. So, 
Fix it. And get it why. The Lord will assist you. Praise the Lord. Now, something you need to learn. There is a lesson we need to learn. When you give your life to Jesus, once you hand over your life to Jesus, learn also to lay down your problem to Jesus. Give him all. And leave it with him. We have to learn something from the farmer. Once a farmer has planted a seed, he leaves the rest to God. His business is to plant seed on the ground. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Who gave the increase? God. God knows everything about us. Once you have planted a seed, leave the rest to God. He knows that the only God can cause the seed to germinate and not him. That is what the farmer knows. The person that will cause the seed to germinate is God. The person that will make the seed to increase is God. You leave everything in the hand of God. The law of what you sow, you will reap is real and it works. And it will never stop. God said to Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay in the land where you are. I will bless you. Isaac did not fold his hand waiting for the blessing. He had to work. One of the work he did is to plant seed on the ground. The same year, he reaped a hundredfold. But if Isaac fold his hand, he said, I'm waiting. God said, he will bless me. I'm waiting. God said, he will bless me. No blessing will come. You must work. Many of us born again, we are not prepared to work. We are waiting for God to do a miracle. Miracle are not accident. The Bible speaks of the gift of working of miracle. It did not say the gift of miracle. You must work it. The gift of working of miracle. Miracles are not accident. It will not happen just like that. The same way with prosperity. It's not because God, everything belongs to God, and if you want to prosper, God will just give it to you. No, God loves everybody, and you will prosper as a result of what you are doing. What you do, that is what will make you to prosper. The shortest gospel message Mary gave, in the Bible was to tell the disciple, whatever he said to you, do it. That was the gospel. Whatever he said to you, do it. The law of substitution will work for you when you begin to do that which God has called you to do. The body of Christ is big. The nails cannot do the works of the tongue. Your feet cannot do the works of the hand. But yet we need all of them. They must work in harmony. When you made up your mind to promote the kingdom of God, you become God's favorite. You become a project in the hand of God. So you don't belong to yourself. As Paul told us, he said, we've been bought with a price. Do your best in your lifetime. Become a project in the hand of God. When you are a project in the hand of God, those forces that torment you, they will just stop. They will not be interested. They will say, no, this one is not part of us anymore. There is no need for us to pay him a visit again. Because now you've made up your mind to save the living God in spirit and in truth, you will not be deceived. David said, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you care for me? When I consider the heaven, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, 
You've made me ruler over the works of your hand. The sun, the moon, the stars were created by God. And the Lord has made us ruler over the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why? In Psalm 121, the Bible says, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. That means there are evil activity beyond the sun and the moon that can destroy your life. But the Lord has made us ruler over the works of his hand. The sun and the moon is part of them. So there is no witch, no wizard that can use the sun, the moon, the star, the wind to torment your life. Many life has been blown away by the satanic wind because you don't know how to play with your spiritual responsibility. It's a big game, this kind of life we are living. And so you need to understand it. You only understand it through the word of God. must have a living faith, a faith that works, wisdom that works. Some wisdom don't work at all. Some faith don't, doesn't work at all. So you need it. Hallelujah. Did we learn something today? Good. I just want to tell you this. Every gathering of sorcerers, every gathering of witches, anywhere they are gathering against your life, they will die in your place in Jesus' name. Amen. Anywhere they are gathering against your business, they will die in the place of your business. Amen. Whatever the enemy is plotting against you, it shall not see the sun of 2014 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even this month of November, they will not finish it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that they will come and confess their wickedness. Just the way God forgave us, we forgive them. But if they continue war, God himself will arise and fight our war. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you this. Every business that was decreed barren, now it shall be fruitful forever. Amen. Every womb that was decreed barren for life, you shall conceive and give birth to twins in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us were not here yesterday. That's why I have to tell you this. When the angel of God came to Mary, he said, Mary, you are highly favored. He said, what kind of greeting is this? It's too much. At the end of the day, the angel of God said to him, you will conceive and give birth to a son. Call his name Jesus. He said, since I'm a virgin, how am I going to conceive? Because I don't know a man. The angel of God said to him, Easy. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the power of God will overshadow you. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the power of God will overshadow you. Now somebody is saying, Hey, Pastor, my fabric is too big. How am I going to conceive? The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the power of God will overshadow you. Somebody is here and say, that is for young people. I'm too old now. I cannot conceive. I, didn't, I never gave birth. I'm too old now. I will never conceive. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of God will overshadow you. I cannot hear you. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of God will Shout it louder so that they can hear you well. Pastor, you are talking only to women. Me, Mr. Man is dead long time ago. Pastor, the Mr. Man uh, is too small. I'm not sure he will he will do something. What will happen? The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of God will overshadow Now, I can't see the answer of my problem to the Holy Ghost. I'm not hunting anybody anymore. I'm going where? To the Holy Ghost. The same way with Jesus when he came, he was about to leave. He said, I must go and he must come. You won't need me at all. Who's that? The Holy Ghost. 
How was he conceived? Through the Holy Ghost. He's living the Holy Ghost. He said, he will guide you into all truth. He will tell you what is here to come. The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, the power of God will overshadow you. It's for creative miracles. There is no miracle beside the Holy Ghost. You need first the Holy Ghost. Then you will see the power of God. And yet, you still have to plant wait. Now, when the Holy Ghost come upon you, the power of God will overshadow you. Mary became pregnant. That's why I'm prophesying for somebody here. I'm asking God, even if you don't say amen, it will happen because he will give you praise and worship in Jesus' name. Amen. He will give you goodness and mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. He will give you David and Jonathan in Jesus' name. Amen. He will give you Mary and Elizabeth in Jesus' name. Amen. Eh? Priscilla and Aquila in the name of Jesus. He will give you Peter and John in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders. Now, let me tell you something. You don't see John fighting Peter. When Peter is about to bring the crippled man out of crippledness, he said to him, look at us. He did not say, look at me. He said, look at us. Look at me and John. Rise up, walk in the name of Jesus. He stood up and walked. When you are giving your twins name, think twice because you must give birth to Joshua and Caleb. There is no place in the Bible where you see Joshua and Caleb are fighting. Oh, Caleb is telling Joshua, we went with you as a spy. Now you are the only one ruling. Why? No ways. It's not written in the Bible. But they are twins. Like Esau and Jacob, they will be fighting every day. And Esau will be nobody because he will sell his birthright. Are you there? Your twins are coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't wait to celebrate with you. We will hold them. I myself, I will put a wrapper that day. My wife will bring his wrapper, so I'll put it around and dance like David. Me and you, we will see who's the best dancer. Are you ready for that competition? Somebody said twins are coming. Twins are coming. To a very old womb. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you shall conceive twins. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't wait to see the day. Now you are here. You say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Anywhere you are, raise your hand. Let me pray for you quickly. God bless you. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Your hand up. Raise your hand. God bless you. Brothers, lay hand on brothers. Sisters, lay hand on sisters. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. You've done well. After a few minutes, you will go with the fellow that lay hand on you. They will minister to you. Amen.